friends, and welcome to another story time with Miss A, brought to you by the Northeast Branch of Reading Public Library. Today's book is read with permission from Simon and Schuster. Now, today we are going to be reading a biography. Do you know what a biography is? A biography is the story of a person's life. If they wrote it themselves, it's called an autobiography. But today, it is just a biography, which means someone else has written it. But our book is about Dr. Anthony Fauci. Do you know who Dr. Fauci is? So Dr. Fauci has been all over the news for the past year. Dr. Anthony Fauci is the director of the U.S. National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. And he's also the chief medical advisor to the president, which is why someone might call him America's doctor, because he gives advice to the president on how best to advise the nation in what to do with their health and also how to develop healthcare laws and policies. So this book is actually called Dr. Fauci, How a Boy from Brooklyn Became America's Doctor. And it's written by Kate Messner and illustrated by Alexandra Bai. So on the cover, we can see him as a little boy and him as an adult. And I really like this quote on the back, which we are going to see again in the book. And it says, don't get discouraged. Think about it carefully. Try to work it out. So this is good advice if you are having a problem. So you don't want to get discouraged. You don't want to give up. You want to think about it carefully. Keep thinking and thinking and try to work it out. Try to think of a solution. And that is what Fauci is trying to do in his career and throughout his life. So let's learn more about him. Anthony Fauci was always asking questions, wondering about the world. From the tropical fish in his bedroom aquarium to the vast oceans of sea life, the blazing stars and the spinning planets in the pictures of his encyclopedias. How did it all work? With a wide open mind, Anthony searched for answers. So as we know, Anthony becomes a scientist, Dr. Fauci. Do you think about things like the ocean, the stars, the planets? Maybe you should be a scientist too. Scientists are always curious, that's really important. His family encouraged that curiosity. When the nuns at his school said you had to go to mass each week to get into heaven, Anthony wondered about his grandfather, an Italian immigrant who spent his Sundays over steaming pots of pasta and bubbling red sauce. Anthony asked his grandfather why he didn't go to church. When I make you all the good food, that's my mass, his grandfather answered. So don't worry about me, I'll be fine. So there's his grandfather and the pasta. Do you have somebody who supports you? Answers your question. If you do, you should know you're very lucky. Anthony's dad ran a drugstore. While his mom and older sister served customers at the cash register, Anthony zipped around the neighborhood on his Schwinn bicycle, delivering prescriptions. Sometimes he'd get a nickel for a tip. So is a nickel still a good tip today? No, a nickel is worth five cents and that's not a lot, but back in the past, money used to be worth more. So that was a pretty good tip. Anytime Anthony struggled with homework, his father reminded him that every problem has a solution. And that's something that scientists work towards. Now we have to get the quote from the back of the book. It says, don't get discouraged. Don't run away because you don't understand the problem. Think about it carefully and try to work it out. So his dad is helping him with his homework and encouraging him not to give up. Anthony learned to start with wondering, then gather evidence and keep an open mind. So that's like the science, we start with wondering, we start with a question, and then we have to gather evidence, we have to figure out what's going on. His neighborhood was full of tough guys and Anthony wasn't that big, so he was pretty short. But he learned to get along with everyone. He was good at talking to people and listening too. 
The boys compared notes about their favorite baseball players and played stickball in the streets. Who could hit the ball the farthest? They measured by sewers, really by the manhole covers, so those circles that you see in the street, that led down to the city sewers, spaced about 100 feet apart. If you hit the ball past one sewer, you were pretty good. But two sewers? That was impressive. Anthony was proud to be a two sewer guy. Anthony loved basketball too, but he was shorter than the other players. How could he compete? He thought about that problem and realized the solution was speed. So he thought about it carefully and thought of a solution. He worked it out. He couldn't shoot the ball over his opponents, but he could dash past them. If you dash, you're running really fast. You dash past them. One of his teammates said he was so quick, he could dribble through a brick wall. Now that's silly. Anthony might have been short, but the other guys looked up to him. They admired his determination and the way he could talk to everyone. So they chose Anthony to be captain of the team. In high school, Anthony realized he wanted to be a doctor. He went to college and got a summer job working construction to help pay for his tuition. When the crew was building a new library for the Cornell Medical College in New York City, Anthony snuck inside to peek at the grand auditorium. So an auditorium is where people sit and listen to something. What would it be like to learn in such an extraordinary place? Then a guard showed up. Anthony's work boots were tracking mud all over the floor. Uh-oh. Anthony told the guard that he was going to attend medical school there in a year. The guard laughed and asked him to leave. So Anthony left, but not for long. And why didn't he leave for long? Because the next year, he was there. He attended that medical school and graduated first in his class. Now he was Dr. Fauci. He became one of the country's top experts on what makes people sick and how to make them well. So this is where I told you he works is the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Soon Dr. Fauci had a whole country of people to care for, a new team to lead, and a lot of problems to solve. It was good that he learned how to get along with all different kinds of people back in Brooklyn. His job required that. So a doctor is more than knowing a lot about, about, about science. You have to be good with people too. You have to take care of their health and that means respecting them as people. New diseases were emerging. To emerge, that means they're showing up. New diseases were showing up. Germs no one had seen before were making people sick. Dr. Fauci and his researchers had to gather evidence and keep an open mind. They searched and studied and did a lot of listening. So an important part of learning is always to listen. Listen with your ears and with your head. You have to think about what people are saying. When a deadly disease called AIDS began spreading through the United States, people criticized the government leaders for not doing enough to stop it. Protesters chanted and shouted outside Dr. Fauci's office. He invited some of them inside to talk so that they could work together to find solutions. So like we said, being a doctor doesn't mean just studying the science. It means talking to people about their problems and treating them with respect. Every new disease was a mystery to wonder about, a new problem to solve. Where had it come from? How did it spread? How could it be prevented until researchers found a cure or vaccine? So being a scientist or a scientist and a doctor, any kind of scientist, means thinking about a lot of different questions. Now we come to coronavirus, to COVID-19. It says one of Dr. Fauci's biggest challenges came when a new disease appeared at the end of 2019. COVID-19 caused by a coronavirus. Within weeks, the virus spread all across the globe. Hospitals were overwhelmed. Doctors and nurses worked around the clock. Stores and gyms and theaters shut down. People had to work and learn from home. 
Did you have to learn from home or any of your siblings? It must have been a really big change. We all had to adjust to a lot of different things, some of them not very good. A virus too tiny to see had stopped the whole world in its tracks. Where had it come from? Why was it spreading so quickly? How could anyone stay safe? People wanted answers, and at first Dr. Fauci simply didn't have them. More and more people got sick, but there had to be a solution. So what do you think he did? He thought about what his dad said. Do you remember? It says, don't get discouraged. Think about it carefully. Try to work it out. So you see all these different doctors working together around the clock. It says Dr. Fauci kept an open mind. He worked with scientists around the world. They listened to one another, gathered evidence, and searched for solutions. They shared ideas, discovered new information, and revised those ideas. So they're doing the work of science. They taught people simple ways to be safe while researchers developed medicine and a vaccine. So what's he doing right here in this picture? He's getting vaccinated. Within a year, people began rolling up their sleeves for the shots that would protect them, the vaccine, so they could go back to school, back to work, back to hugging their families, and back to playing with their friends. And Dr. Fauci did that too. And he turned 80. Through all those months of problem solving, he looked forward to being together with his family again, just like all of us making good food and sharing stories. Soon enough, it would be time to get back to work, searching for solution to whatever challenges may come next. The end. And I just wanna share Dr. Fauci's five tips for future scientists. Here's a picture of Dr. Fauci. Maybe you recognize him from the news. And so he says his top five tips, if any of you want to be scientists, are number one, Keep an open mind. Number two, don't be afraid to fail. Science is hard, you're gonna make mistakes. And you're just gonna to have to pick yourself back up and look for another solution. Number three, get excited about discovery. That's about being curious. Try to find new answers and new questions. Four, remember that science is self-correcting. So again, you might be wrong and that's okay. And number five, always keep learning. So kids, if you haven't already, make sure you pick up a Go Pack at Northeast. It will have a fun little craft for you to do. And join me next time, Monday at 10 a.m. next week for another story time with Miss A. So I'll leave you with this quote one last time. Don't get discouraged. Think about it carefully and try to work it out. Bye friends and see you next week.